More of the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, we're back. 440 from the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios. We'll step aside for just a few minutes from this Yankees and Tigers fight uh, in Detroit. Some crazy stuff. And we got to talk some NFL. Eagles preseason game number three coming up later tonight up against the Dolphins. We'll also get into a little bit about the Jets and also the Giants as well. And we welcome in Gary Myers, who does a tremendous job for many, many years covering the NFL for the New York Daily News, and he's kind enough to hop on board with us right now. Gary, appreciate a few minutes. Thanks for the time, and how are you? What's happening, Zach? Everything's good up here. Well, everything's crazy up there, too, with the uh, fight that just happened uh, in Detroit with the Yankees. <laughs> I, but know, I just saw the video of that. Yeah. Uh, absolutely wild. Hey, uh, let me ask you this, because we're getting ready for a preseason game tonight. Jets and Giants getting ready for one uh, over the weekend. We all know the preseason is very boring, and a lot of these teams now like these joint practices what do you make of the future of the preseason moving forward? I think the preseason game should be eliminated. And I wrote a column about that yesterday. I think they're totally counterproductive. They're, they're pretty much unwatchable, except for the third game when the starters play about a half. Um, but there's just too many costly injuries that happen in August that impact what happens September through December. And I think it should be replaced by um, – First of all, to prepare for the season, have the team scrimmage a little bit more. Um, where the coach, it's more of a controlled environment um, that the coaches can set the parameters on how much hitting and and how physical it gets. Um, I think there's certainly enough time to evaluate the players um, by doing it that way. You know, in reality, most teams are are pretty well set going into training camp. They know who about 48 out of the 53 players are before they even practice for the first time. So you're really just trying to get your team ready for the season and then decide on the final five spots on the roster. So I, I, I think they should go to 17 games, Zach, and um, add a bye week, push the Super Bowl back to President's Day weekend, which they've wanted to do for a long time, and, and get rid of these games that really, I think, do more harm than good. Let me just play devil's advocate here for a second. Mm -hmm. And I agree, they should eliminate some of the preseason games. I think you could probably keep two of them. Uh, but with the terms of uh, player safety and how big the league is right now on player safety, is it at all hypocritical if they add another regular season game uh, here by and, and, and you know take away some of the preseason games since the preseason games are considered a little bit lighter work? Well, the way I, I figure it is that the starters pretty much don't play in the first game, and they don't play in the fourth game. And in the in the second game, they probably play a quarter or a quarter and a half at the most. And the third game, they play at least the first half and maybe halfway through the third quarter. So if you're taking that and putting the second game together with the third game, that equals four quarters. So I'm just saying move those four quarters to the 17th game, and that game will at least count. So in terms of how, how much these guys are on the field, it's the same. It's the same. You know, you're taking the four quarters that they would play in the preseason and just moving it to a 17th game. And if a player gets hurt in that game, which you, you hope never happens, at least they can say, well, it was in a game that counted. To lose a guy, and the Giants were holding their breath the other night with Beckham, to lose a guy in the second preseason game in August that nobody will remember um, a month from now, except if a player suffers a, a severe injury. Um, I, I just don't see what the purpose is anymore. It, it's outgrown its usefulness. It'll hurt a little bit in preparation for the season. I admit that. But I think you can make up for most of it in training camp. Having the, you know, the Eagles scrimmage against the Steelers with the coaches being able to control it somewhat, I think that's the way to go. I really do. Since you mentioned Odell, and I know Ben McAdoo didn't give much. He just said he has an ankle. Uh, what are you hearing the latest on Odell Beckham? Well, McAdoo has not ruled him out for Saturday night, but I can't see any chance that he's going to play against the Jets or in, you know, certainly not in the last preseason game against the Patriots. So just try to get him ready for when it counts against the Cowboys on September 10th. Um, because the Giants have not been very forthcoming about this injury, we don't know – really to the degree of that he's hurt. I mean, did he actually, we know it's not broken, but did he tear any ligaments? Um, 
is it a high ankle sprain or a low ankle sprain? They're not really giving any information. But just judging on the fact that Beckham was able to jog off the field before his little dramatic act of kneeling in the, in the tunnel outside the Giants' locker room the other night in Cleveland, I think the fact that he was able to jog off the field is a pretty good sign because anybody who suffered a really bad ankle injury, and I have broken my ankle, um, you cannot jog off the field like he did. If you broke it or you, you know, tore ligaments, it just hurts too much to possibly do that. So you think he was putting on a little bit of a show uh, for uh, the cameras in the tunnels? Well, what do you think? I mean, he is he he does tend to you know to be a dramatic you know to that that kind of stuff would be right in his wheelhouse. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. That it wouldn't surprise me at all if he knew the cameras were there with him and he gets into the fetal position. I don't know what he was really doing at that point. Was was he praying? Was he in in severe pain? I, I don't really know, and he hasn't really said. Um, but if he was just being a little dramatic, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Since we're talking about the Giants, and you know that team better than mm-hmm. most, uh, the offensive line, Jerry Reese knew it was a problem going into this offseason and pretty much just stayed status quo uh, with that offensive line. Why do you, he, Why do you think he didn't do more to fix that offensive line? That's a great question. He did not use a quality draft pick on an offensive lineman, nor did he sign anybody. They, you know, you plug it and play. I mean, they did bring in DJ Fluke, who was a former former first round pick with the Chargers, and they've been playing him at, at guard. He was drafted as a tackle. Um, there's been no indication he's making a move on anybody's job to to bring back the same offensive line and expect different results. I think was was a mistake, and we'll see how much of a mistake it is as it plays out because that is the Giants' biggest weakness. I mean, they have good skill position players. You know, the receivers, tight end, rookie tight end is good. Eli still throws it really well. Their running game is a little suspect, but you wonder how much of that is because of the offensive line. Um, not going for a major upgrade at any of the positions across the line I think is going to come back and hurt the Giants this season. Who wins the NFC East this year, Gary? You know, I would have said Dallas, but at this point, we just have to go by that Elliott suspension is going to stick. It, it might change after the appeal or maybe if he goes to court, but not having him for six games, and they have the Cowboys do have a rough schedule at the beginning, I, I would make the Giants the favorite right now. Uh, but that could change. You know, if, if the LA suspension gets downgraded or even put on hold, that, that changes the way we look at, at the Cowboys. But I think it's a two-team race. The Eagles are probably a year away, and, and I just don't like the Redskins. So, uh, I mean, I, not that I have a dislike for them. It's just I don't like their team this year. Um, so I think it's a two-team race, and um, maybe the deciding factor is how many games Zeke Elliott misses. In Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz second year, as we're talking to Gary Myers right now for the New York Daily News, uh, when you look at the Eagles, how would you view 2017 as a successful one uh, for them? What do they need to do to make it a success? Well, I mean, there's nothing that says they can't make a run for a wild card spot. Um, a lot of that will depend on the development of Wentz. I thought he, he started strong last year and didn't finish as well as the Eagles would have liked. So now it's an issue of you know, how big a jump did he take from year one to year two? And the Eagles have every right to expect them to be much better this year. This is this is the time from the first to the second year that you know quarterbacks who have played a lot in their rookie year like he did, uh, that's when they make significant strides. So uh, I think a lot of what the Eagles were able to accomplish this year will be dependent on you know what kind of player is Carson Wentz going to be. He's not going to be as good this year as he will next year or the year after. I mean, he's a developing player, but. You know, plenty of quarterbacks at this point in their career have had a lot of success and taken their teams. I mean, Mark Sanchez got to the AFC Championship game in his first and second year, so that shows you that um, that it can be done because Wentz is a much player, better player as Sanchez has been, and I think Eagle fans saw enough of Sanchez to, to agree with me on that one. Now, in the offseason, it was clear that they got a lot of pieces around Carson Wentz. Some people skeptical 
of three of those pieces. What do you make out of Alshon Jeffrey, Torrey Smith, and LeGarrette Blunt for this upcoming football season? Well, starting with Blunt, I, I'm always surprised when the Patriots devalue him after the season. He, he's helped them win a couple of Super Bowls. And he, he's always been very effective for the Patriots, but now they've let him leave twice as a free agent. Um, I don't really understand that. I know I've just read because I haven't seen Eagles play this summer, but I know Blunt is not having a great camp and, and hasn't played well in the preseason games. Um, Do you think that just but, comes uh, down to how Bill looks at the running back position as a rotating door? Because if you look at their success, and I know it's been many years, it's been running back by committee and a lot of different backs. Yeah, and I think that Blunt's uh, fumble in the Super Bowl probably cost them. Probably. Uh, in, in Bill's eyes, um, it didn't wind up costing him the game, but it put him in a bit, pretty big hole. Um, and then they didn't make him a real big offer to stay. Um, yeah, I think that he feels he's at interchangeable parts at running back, but it just seems that every time that Blunt is there and he's the number one back, that he's extremely productive, scores a lot of touchdowns. But at the end of the season, they always consider him to be pretty expendable. Um, so, I mean, I'll ask you. I mean, it seems that there's a chance that Blunt's not even going to make the team this year in Philly. I don't know if it's going to come down to that. But, yeah, um, Gary, I don't buy into that. I know that's been a lot of conversation. Yeah. I just think that, you know, talking to Frank Reich, talking to Doug Peterson, and hearing Carson Wentz speak, I just believe that when the regular season happens, and even Frank Reich said it the other day, you don't overreact too much with veteran players in the preseason. So I think he makes yeah, his yeah, team. Now, now, what type of year does he have? I take the median of his career right now. I think if he goes for 700, 750 yards and gives you about seven, eight touchdowns, I think that's a good year for him this year. Yeah, I mean, and he, he did do better than that for New England. So yeah, no he's question. Certainly capable. He's certainly capable. Alshon Jeffrey, I, I don't know. I, I thought there'd be a lot more interest in him um, in in the off season. You know, he just got a one year contract. I, you know, a year ago, we we would have thought if Jeffrey made it to the to the market that he'd be really high in demand, but. The fact that there has not been good quarterback play the last few years in Chicago you know, didn't help him. So uh, he'll be an extremely motivated player this year. I think that the Eagles can count on that because he's playing, he's playing for a long-term contract either in Philly or elsewhere. So he's really going to want to do well. And, you know, historically, players have always done well when they're playing for new contracts. I mean, Torrey Smith was kind of invisible in San, in San Francisco. And... Um, he was an adequate receiver when he was in Baltimore. He was never, you know, an elite player, and there's no reason to believe that he will be now. But I think the two of them are an upgrade over what what they've had the last few years. Is LaShawn McCoy on the Bills for this entire season? Well, are you saying is he going to get, get traded? Because he's not going to be cut. Well, yeah, um, yeah, via trade, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, I, w- I would say so. Are they going to leave themselves with absolutely nothing after, you know, getting rid of Sammy Watkins, who, when he is healthy, is still is is a very good player. He just hasn't been healthy. Um, I'm not sure. Also, what you get from McCoy um, at at this point, he's been in the league a bunch of years. Uh, the shelf life of running backs, you know, if you if you can get five or six good years out of a running back. You've done well. Uh, he's been in the league around that long now. and um, um, I- I'm not sure what his trade value would be, to be honest with you. Is Colin Kaepernick playing at all in the NFL this year at any point? Boy, I really would have thought he would have been signed by now. Um, you know, I don't like to use the word that he's been blackballed, and I don't think it's collusion. I just think every team has come to the same decision on their own, which is that the owners are concerned that what the fan reaction is going to be and any positives he brings as a player is outweighed in their minds by the negative he brings and any backlash they'll get for bringing in a player that started this whole movement of you know, protesting uh, the national anthem. Uh, listen, Zach, if you, if you judge us strictly on ability, he could probably start for two or three teams and back up about 25 teams. Could start for the uh, Jets and the, and the Browns tomorrow, right? The Jets and the Browns, right? Yeah, and um, Jacksonville also. Um, there's no question he's, he hasn't been signed because of the protests. It, he's not an elite player anymore. He's not the player he was in 2012. Agreed. 
came with he came within one completed pass of winning the Super Bowl. But if you, if you look at the quarterback rosters on some of these teams and who their backups are, I mean, look at Dallas. I can't even remember the rookie's name now. Um, who's probably going to beat out Kellen Moore? Um, but the Cowboys don't have a backup. I mean, I don't understand why he wasn't signed in Seattle. That seemed to be a perfect fit. You know, when you bring in a backup. You want him to be able to play the same system as the starter. It's very disruptive if you, you know, you're playing a, a, a quarterback who's not mobile, and then your backup is, is Kaepernick, and you have to adjust the offense. It's hard to do in the middle of the season, so you always want the backup to be very, you know, adept at running the offense that you're you're doing. And that seems makes Seattle a perfect a perfect place. He got a lot of support from the Seahawks players last year. He's still getting support from the Seahawks players, especially with Michael Bennett. You know, Pete Carroll is a very adaptable coach. He can coach any, you know, he can coach anybody. Um, I, I don't know that the, their owner, Paul Allen, would really be all that concerned. Well, let me ask you this, Gary. Is there a chance that maybe he doesn't want to play anymore? Is, is that a possibility? Well, if that was how he felt, you'd, think that would have come out already right right um i have not heard that um and i think this issue would be put to rest if if he would come out and say that he doesn't have the desire to play anymore but as far as i know that's not the case i mean i wouldn't be shocked if he decided there was a greater purpose in his life than playing football and and this whole issue uh is not worth the aggravation and he'd rather find us find himself different form and platform to express his views, but he has not said that. And I think this is a bad look for the NFL right now, and I, I, I would have to think that the people on Park Avenue would wish he was in a, in a camp right now. Um, but the longer this goes on, the, the more it's going to be talked about. It, it kind of died out a little bit the second half of last season, and he's come out and said that, he signed. He'll he'll stand for the anthem this year. But I mean, he has started a whole movement in the NFL. I mean, there were eleven or twelve players in the Browns the other night who didn't stand for the anthem. So whether he plays or not, this is not going away. If he comes back and he stands, a lot of other players still might not. He's, you know, they might be kneeling or sitting. So um, I, in all the years I've covered the league, I, I've never there's never been anything like this. I'll end you on this as we wrap up with Gary Myers because I know you have to run. Uh, we'll tie in two subjects. Uh, let's get to Jerry Kramer. I've been asking you about him for a lot of years, and I saw today he was named a senior uh, finalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And then also tell me a little bit about your new book that's uh, coming up. Yeah, I mean, I'm disappointed that, that Joe Klecko wasn't one of the two. Um, I really think that he deserves it. Uh, Jerry Kramer made you know, probably the most famous block in NFL history, although there's disputes whether he – had the primary block. I know that's been a, a source of controversy for 40 years, but I, I think he's a Hall of Fame player, and um, I'm surprised he didn't get in when he was a modern era candidate all those years ago. I've only been on the committee for seven, eight years now, so seven or eight, not 78. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys should put um, T.O. in. I think it's a joke that T.O.'s not in. Let me just say that to you. That's my big gripe these days. Well, I, I will say this, that in the cut down from 15 to 10 in the last two years when he's been a candidate, I have voted for him. Good job. But he didn't make he didn't make the cut. Uh, I will say that if he did make the cut, I wasn't positive what I was going to do. I was certainly I had an open mind about continuing to vote for him, but I, I, that was not the issue. Uh, as far as my new book, I just mentioned real quick, it's called My First Coach. It's about quarterbacks' relationships with their fathers, Um I'm hoping that middle school and high school boys and girls and their parents and then, you know, football fans in general will find this, you know, uh, a very useful book. There's a lot of life lessons in there. I interviewed uh, quarterbacks like Elway in Montana and Derek Carr, James Winston, Jim Harbaugh, Phil Simms, et cetera. Um, and I think it's a really cool book that uh, is pretty unique and a lot to be learned and a lot of good football stories in there as well. It, it was released um, – yesterday so it's available in all the bookstores and and on on amazon as well well congratulations we'll know it'll be a success gary myers the new york daily news we appreciate it as always all right take care i'll talk to you soon zach thanks so much gary myers joining us right there on the zach gilb show